Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg and I make hard candy here. And we are going to be doing a special video today about Christmas in July, the strangeness of its tradition and its origins. Because have you ever wondered why we celebrate Christmas in July? And it was really bothering me because every July 25th for Christmas in July at Lofty Pursuits, we make a batch of candy canes. And this isn't just because it's Christmas in July. This is to keep our hand in it. It's really hard to keep candy cane production consistent. And if you haven't made it for a year, you lose your edge. So the new apprentices and the old apprentices all get together and we do one batch of quick candy canes that we put on our website, www.pd.net, for those of you who don't want to wait another six months before you can get a good candy cane from us. It's been a tradition going on now for about 10 years and, uh, well, we're going to continue it. But that left me with a quandary. If I wanted a video up about Christmas in July, I'd have to make it before Christmas in July. And that's not when I'm making candy canes. So this is going to be sort of a best of video while I tell stories over the video of us making different color candy canes from past videos. Some of the footage you've seen, some of the footage you may not have seen. But I'm going to have a little fun here, and hopefully you will too. And we're going to delve into the real question of why is Christmas in July a holiday? Where did it come from? And hopefully I'm going to lead you in the general direction, but... Here's a spoiler alert. There are no good firm answers, but there's several theories coming from different directions. And if you want to get blow by blows about how we make candy canes, I'm going to steer you to our videos number 6, 7, 45, 47, 67, 87, and 92. We've covered this topic a lot, folks. We're going to concentrate more in history here, and we're going to be back to a regular candy making video, well, hopefully a week from now on Thursday. I'd also like to give a shout out to our Patreon subscribers. The top level ones currently get a podcast from me on a regular basis. This is extra stuff that I don't have room to put in the video or me talking about the creation of the videos. It's sort of bonus. It's not something which changes or takes away from the channel. So if you see these names and you know any of them, please give them a thank you for supporting this channel. This is one of these research projects I was expecting to find a clear answer to. I was expecting it to be commercialized. It seems like a commercialized thing. And it all started when I stumbled across a copy of Southern Living. I am in the South. I do get magazines occasionally. And a couple of years ago, they did a great article in the history of Christmas in July. And they traced the origin back to a, an event that happened on July 24th and 25th in 1933 at a girls' camp called Camp Keystone in Brevard, North Carolina. And it's a very specific event where they started doing a tradition of a Christmas in July. They had Santa, they had trees, they had everything. And it seems to have spread across the area, mostly because of this lady who worked there named Miss Fanny. And it became popular in the region and it went around. And they have a lot of research for this, but this seems to belie the point that other things happened with Christmas in July. Chris, there was a movie called Christmas in July that was released in 1940, and it was a remake of a uh, play called something like The Coffee Prize. It was about a gentleman who won a contest, or thought he won a contest, where he came up with a slogan for a coffee manufacturer. He won a large amount of money in the middle of the summer, and he started buying gifts for every, everyone. And it became a comedy when he realized he didn't actually win the money. He was tremendously in debt, and he was embarrassed about all this. I've not seen the movie. If you have, please comment down there. But that would have only been a few years, seven years later. Now, what I'm thinking is this is coincidence because this term seems obvious. And perhaps this is going to show you a little bit about how I do primary research for these videos. And I try to research them fairly well. And I go all over the place. And the next part, I want your help with. So I started assuming that there would be Christmas in July in Australia and New Zealand. I mean, their seasons are reversed. So it's going to be cold in the middle of the summer. So why not put a second Christmas celebration there? And every bit of research I had said it started in Australia, it's popular there now, but it started in 1980 when a bunch of tourists at a resort decided all the snow was there and they needed to celebrate Christmas in July. And this just seems strange to me. 
as well. There's no equivalent to Christmas in July in South America. I mean, when they came down, they don't have any history of that holiday with snow. The British settlers, some willingly and some unwillingly in Australia, brought the holiday with them and they equated it with snow and cold. Well, Britain at that time wasn't having much snow, but at least cold. So the reversing of the seasons in Christmas and July makes sense to me. So I call out all of our friends in New Zealand and Australia and see if you can talk to your parents and your friends, see when they first encountered Christmas in July and let me know. Now, it does seem pretty clear that that did not go from Australia to the United States. But once again, there was a movie that came out in 1940 and English language movies were widely distributed between English language speaking countries many years later perhaps and even they run on tv i can show evidence that this film has been on tv at least in the last two years here in the united states so does it make sense that it was not in australia before 1980 i can't say that's it too of course most of my research is candy research and most of most of it is america centric just because i live in north america and in the united states but i wondered what europe would do i mean Summer holidays are a thing in Europe. Every town has one. And they translated this strange tradition to the United States. North Florida, around Tallahassee, has a lot of great holidays for things you just wouldn't think of having a holiday for. One town around here has Nat Days. Another one has Mule Time. There's Swine Time, which I guess goes with Mule Time. We have the Worm Grunting Festival, even. And worm grunting, if you don't know, is an activity where you drive a wooden stake into the ground and you take a serrated piece of wood and you run it over the top of the stake and it sends vibrations into the ground, drives worms crazy if you can get into a low wet spot, and they come out like crazy around you. I've actually seen this happen. And then you pick up the worms and you go fishing. And there are guys who still go out collecting worms like this for to sell to fishermen in the area. We have the rattlesnake roundup. Oh, the Blue Crab Festival, the Stone Crab Festival. And in Europe, they have a lot of these strange festivals, too, in all these little towns. And I couldn't believe that uh, Christmas in July wasn't something that already happened in Europe. Uh, you know, it was one of these things. So I did some l research into Europe, and I found that in 1892, there was a French op opera called Werther, that referred to Christmas in July, and it was translated into English in 1894. But while this is an early reference, there doesn't seem to be any real connections between it in the 1890s, the 1933 summer camp, and um, the Australian tradition of Christmas in July. But as usual, real holidays and pseudo-holidays all go back to marketing. And while I can't tell you when it really started and how the directions happened. There is one focus point in time. It was in 1943. The Cavalry Church in Washington, D.C. celebrated Christmas in July. They did carols, they did presents, and the main thing was to be a charity fundraiser, and it was successful. And in the D.C. area, this seems to have taken off. Because in 1945, it was decided it would be a good morale booster for World War II. And the post office and the greeting card industry met together, and the U.S. Army and Navy, of course, and started to do a campaign promoting people to send Christmas in July cards to the soldiers at the front. They were constantly trying to get people to write because writing was not a habit that everybody was in, and the men at the front, well, if they knew who they were fighting for, the morale was better. So it really did going go out of advertising, but as part of the war effort. By 1950, Christmas in July themes were being used for summertime ads, and it went all over the country. Now, I'm still having trouble figuring out how this connects with Australia, because before World War II, there really wasn't that much connection between the two companies in marketing and advertising. Movies were going around, and some media, and I'm not even sure when Christmas in July the movie would have hit Australia, but it probably would have hit it by 1950 or 1960. So we're now looking at something where I don't have a firm date, but I can tell you it became a marketing thing in 1944, and we're taking advantage of that marketing 
to practice making candy canes, and to sort of give people a mid-year respite for the peppermint goodness of a big candy cane that we make. So if you go to our website, www.pd.net, you can buy our candy canes right now, and you can get them shipped to you right away. We're selling them by twos instead of sixes, so you can get a smaller quantity for the holiday. They're going to last while they last. We're not planning on making a second batch, but if we get enough orders, who knows? And besides getting candy canes that you'll enjoy, we're going to practice putting together a new round of apprentices and training them on candy canes. Some of them have never made it, and it's going to make the holiday season all that much better for us this year, so we don't have to struggle making bad batches when it counts. This batch will be pretty good, but if you get it, please forgive us if they're not perfect. This is how we bring the next generation of the tradition along, and we keep the tradition going. So thank you again for watching our uh, YouTube video. I hope this story was interesting. I hope the old footage was interesting. Before you go, I'm going to leave one question. Christmas in warm weather. Now, I'm here in Florida, and I grew up in Brooklyn where everyone wanted a white Christmas. It was told in song and legend. But why do we want a white Christmas? Bethlehem's weather in Tallahassee's is almost identical, and... We're between the 50s and the 40s around Christmas most years. And that's what it's like in Bethlehem. So why do people want to go to where it's snowing for Christmas? Why don't they want to come to Tallahassee, Florida? I mean, heck, Hernando de Soto, in 1539, spent a winter in Tallahassee, and it was the first winter with a priest. So the first Christmas Mass in North America took place here in Tallahassee, and it took place on a ridge line that starts roughly where my house is and runs about a mile in another direction to where they think the ceremony actually took place, with his men spending the winter on his ridge for drainage reasons. My neighbors keep on finding little relics, chain links, buttons occasionally, Indian arrowheads because they wintered with a local Indian tribe, in their front yards. I've never been lucky enough to do this. But the history is here. So next time you're thinking of a place to go to celebrate Christmas, come to Tallahassee, July or any other time. And enjoy a warm Christmas with the same temperature range as Bethlehem. Thank you for watching this video. We're Lofty Pursuits. We're located right off the Thomasville Road exit of I-10, very close to I-10. If you're ever driving by, please come and visit. We don't make candy all the time, but we make candy a lot, and we're open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. If you're lucky, you might catch us making candy. If you want to try these candy canes for yourself, please go to our website, which is www.pd.net. And if you'd like to follow us and find out more information about us, you can always subscribe to us on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, and now Patreon, where we're doing a podcast on a regular basis, posting behind-the-scenes photos and giving additional materials. We're not pulling anything off this YouTube channel. We're just adding more things in a different spot. So thank you again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.